G'day guys. In this video, I'm going to be using one of these, a toroid, to create a coaxial current ballon, common mode current ballon, otherwise known as. Now this is an FT240 uh, Mix 43 uh, type material uh, toroid. You can purchase these uh, well, all over the web, just have a, a search for FT240-43. Now what I want to do is I want to um, wrap some of my feed line around this to choke off some common mode current that can appear and can cause RFI in the shack and also pick up unwanted and unnecessary noise from uh, other sources outside of outside of uh, well, the signals that we really want to hear, including noise. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video today. So this is Steve Hunt G3TXQ's work here uh, on common mode chokes. If we have a look through here, he's got a nice little diagram of all sorts of different ferrite cord chokes and also air cord chokes. Now, uh, the one that I'm looking at here is the 12 turn on RG58 using the FT240 Mix uh, 43 uh, toroid that I was uh, displaying uh, before. So um, there's a couple of things here. Basically, there's a legend down the bottom here that shows how much impedance there is uh, at uh, the specific frequency. So ideally, you want this as high as possible. Uh, so that the impedance is high, chokes off the current, uh, off the shield of the coax. So the black bars at the bottom of the coloured bars here, they indicate the range of frequencies over which the choke impedance is predominantly resistive. So uh, basically, you want, as, as Steve says here, you want to aim to choose a choke which has a high impedance and is resistive over the frequency range of interest. Um, so I've chosen the 12 turn RG58 on FT240 Mix 43 for the reasons that it seems to cover a majority of the band. So we've got 0 to 30 megahertz here down the bottom and it and it's got reasonable performance. So we've got yellow, which is over 2K worth of impedance uh, from 30 megahertz down to about 17 megahertz or so. Then it moves into the green. So we've got 4K worth of impedance here. Um, all the way down to about four megahertz, about yeah, about eighty meters there. Then there's a little gap there of about two k impedance, and then it starts to gradually fall off as we get down towards uh, one sixty meters. One thing to note too here is if you have a look at the air cord um, common mode choke, uh, common mode chokes, um, otherwise known as ugly balance, they have a very narrow. Uh, depending on how many turns and on what size format they can be quite narrow and the impedance can vary depending on where it is in the frequency band. So it's quite, you can see here there's, with the ferrite core, it's quite wide banded, uh, whereas here it's quite narrow. So for instance here for a, you can get very, very high impedance. So over 8K here, 25 turns of RG58 on a 4.25 inch air cord uh, um, former. So at 10 megahertz and also almost down to about 40 meters there, it's 4 to 8K, but then outside of that, it drastically drops off. I mean, it's not too bad, but it does drop off and 25 turns is quite a, a fair bit too on a, on, a, um, on a form of that size. And of course, that uh, drops off even worse. Here you can see here five turns of RG58. It, uh, he, it's not even, he hasn't even put any data here because it's uh, below 500 uh, ohms of impedance, uh, below 14 me or below 20 meters. So quite interesting. Um, so ugly balance are not as broadband as probably some people might think. They're, uh, they can be quite narrow range. You can get a very good performance out of them though if you do uh, have the correct amount of turns for the uh, specific uh, frequency that you want if you want just one or maybe even two close bands together. Okay, so let me show you exactly how I'm going to put this together. All right, so now that we know uh, how many terms we need, 12 turns on this uh, ferrite core, thanks to uh, Steve G3TXQ's site, uh, let's go ahead and start to wind this. Now, um, if you need more information on toroids, I can only highly recommend that you check out the YouTube channel, The Smokin' Ape. Uh, check out his uh, YouTube channel because if there's anyone that knows uh, anything about roids, it's him. So uh, check out his, his site, so, or his YouTube channel, sorry. Now, I'm gonna use a cable tie just to hold 
this coax in position so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now, one turn is each pass through the toroid's core. So what have I got here? I've got one, two, three so far. So I want six, and then I'm going to cross back over to the other side of the toroid. All right, so I've got, what have I got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross back over through, oh, if I can get that camera shot. Pass that back through the toroid and then up and over the other side, like so. And then we repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, so that should be pretty close. So what's that? We've got one, no, passing through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 12 turns passing through there now. So basically I'm gonna have that come out the other side. So I'll use another cable tie to hold that bit of coax in. So I had one extra turn there because I forgot the turn that actually passes back through the core here in the middle as well. So, uh, cause that, uh, that also is a turn through the, through the core. So there we go. Now, what we need to do is I have a waterproof box. I'm going to put this in the box cause I'm a bit pedantic and I don't want the water to get in. So that's gonna sit in there quite nicely and I'll put the other side in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a coax connector on this end of the cable and uh, have it close to the antenna feed point or as close as to the feed point as I can. And then that way, hopefully, we won't get any common mode current straying down the coax. So yeah, as simple as that, that's just a uh, simple current ballon for, putting on your coax line. Thank you very much for watching, 73 for now.